Okay, so let's get started with the actual content. And I hope the hack that I have done here works um, and people in the Zoom can hear us. Okay, so, so today's lecture is more of an introduction to like, so what we are going to see uh, for the next 12 weeks. Um, let me see if it works. Okay, so before we begin, like I have a couple of quick questions. Um, I think it's going to be very difficult for me to let the Zoom people participate because I don't have both the laptops working. So maybe just for the class, like so. Can you identify the cat in this picture? Is it A or B or C or D? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, then maybe I took a bad example. Like, uh, but you know what cat I mean. So, so is it like what option is it? C. C. Mostly C. Okay. And now, can you compute this multiplication mentally? Uh, maybe there are some humans who can, uh, but mostly no, right? So now, here is an interesting thing. So task one is actually very easy for humans. Like I show you these pictures, in a fraction of a second, you can say that C is cat, right? Like so, uh, however, it is extremely difficult for, difficult for missions, okay? So on the other hand, like task two, which is extremely easy for machines like calculators and computers is very, very difficult for humans. Okay, now what is going wrong? So why is there such a mismatch? Any answers? Yeah? Well, our brain is... Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, our brain is well designed to look at the world, but it's not really designed to make complicated calculations. Okay, um, so like we have a good visual cortex, I guess. That okay, so for the purpose of recording, I will repeat it. So, so he says that our brain is more designed for these kind of visual things and seeing the world, but not for complex calculations. Okay, any other answers? Yeah. I think because we saw a lot of cats and we have experienced our cognition ability to actually distinguish between cats and hunters, that's us. We have also seen a lot of numbers, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so whoever is first. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I think because human brain is efficient to infer information with uh, little. The things that we see two photos of an animal, animal and a third one, we can say, okay, it's the same animal. Uh, but for a computer, it would be uh, thousands of images of this. Okay, but the question is why? So, so your, your observation is right, uh, but the question is why? I think he asked first. Okay. I think uh, our brain compared to a machine are way more used to seeing patterns. We detect patterns more quickly. Well, that is not completely true. Machines see a lot of patterns too. I guess. Okay, so there are a lot of hands here. So I'll probably go like this. <laughs> I think uh, it's because both systems are internally different. Machines and human brains don't compute information the same. We have neurons and patterns work with transistors, and thus information is not stored exactly the same or, or, or processed. Okay, okay, so the answer is uh, information are processed in different ways. Okay, you? Uh, you know, I think uh, it uh, depends on the, uh, you know, database. And for the picture of that for humans, we have a lot of database, and you know, we have the, the picture of this. And for the machine, uh, maybe it has the less database. Uh, done the human and uh, it's harder to calculate every pixel of the picture and you know it's the linear uh, uh, I mean the picture of the uh, what we can uh, use it okay so it has something to do okay it has something to do with information processing so yeah. I'll put it that way yeah the second task can be divided uh, in much smaller tasks while the first task is 
lot more complex. And okay, we are slowly getting there. Next. Uh, I think it is because the, there is a known method on how to compute the second test, but not for the first one. Yeah, okay, so, so that was the answer I was looking for. Okay, so like the fundamental difference here is like in the second task, which is like just multiplication, we have a well defined algorithm, which is a set of instructions. And we know that machines are really good in following the instructions and implementing them, right? Like on the other hand, yes. for the first task, we still don't know how humans like do this, like, or like we don't have the algorithm that the brain is using, uh, like in a more precise way. Um, to solve the problem, right? Like so. So if you have the algorithm, then things are easier. Like you just need to implement this algorithm in whatever programming language you like, and you have the system ready, right? Now the real challenge comes only when you don't have the algorithm to do a task. Okay, and in that case, how do humans learn? Right? Like we learn through examples. Right? Like so, we see as as, as someone mentioned. Like so, you see two cats, and then the third time I show you a new cat you can recognize that this is a cat because you learned through examples, right? Like now, how can we design systems that can learn through examples? Okay, so that is what uh, the fundamental focus of uh, this course is going to be. Now, yeah, so I think that's what is listed here. So can we design an algorithm that can find the algorithm to solve a task by just looking at the examples? Okay, so we are looking at the meta problem here, right? Like so, like an algorithm that is going to design or find this algorithm to do the task, okay? And this is going to happen through like seeing lots and lots of examples. Okay, so I would like to begin this course uh, with uh, the like, famous quote from Alan Turing, like for people who have not seen Alan Turing before, like uh, he's considered to be the father of computer science. Like, so he has done several fundamental contributions to several areas in computer science, including AI, okay? so. So this week's reading is his 1950 paper, like which is where I have taken this question. Okay, so the question is in 50s, like when there was no computer around, like he asked this question, I propose to consider the question, can machines think? Okay, now it was a very bold question to ask in 50, uh, 1950, right? Like, so like uh, we know that humans are superior because like we think, we can think and like can machines think? Now he did not just pro pose a question. He also designed a test to measure whether a system is at human level in, th in thinking. Okay, so so the test that he pro proposed in the same paper is called the imitation game, which is also known as the Turing test. Uh, it's a really interesting test, like where like you have some human in this case the tester C who is trying to talk to someone sitting in the other side of the room. Okay, now. The reply could come from either a human, B in this case, or it could come from a machine, okay? Now, this human, after talking to this interface for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, should guess whether this is a human or a machine, okay? And if the human says this is a machine, uh, then the machines failed because it couldn't uh, simulate humans, right? Like, so on the other hand, like if the human wrongly thinks that the machine is a human, like then possibly, like the machine uh, can think at human level. Okay, so now he proposed this test in 1950 and he also made this interesting statement, uh, which I'm going to quote here. Like, I believe that in about 50 years time, it will be possible to program computers with a storage capacity of about 10 power nine, uh, which is so small now, to make them play the imitation game so well that an average interrogator will not have more than 70% chance of making the right identification after five minutes of questioning, okay? So the original question, can machines think? I believe to be too meaningless to deserve discussion, okay? Uh, and his estimate was 2000. So we are in 2021 now, like, and we are nowhere close to solving uh, this problem. Okay? So we don't have thinking machines yet. Uh, while some people believe that AGI is too close, like uh, we are really far, far away from systems uh, that can think like humans, okay? so. Uh, so what can a machine really do, right? Like, so for example, machines can play chess. Uh, so, so this is the success story from IBM. Uh, like IBM designed uh, a machine called Deep Blue in 1997, which was able to beat the then chess champion, like human world champion, like Gary Kasparov. And machines can drive. So I hope this audio works, but audio is not really needed here.
I'll just turn off the audio. <laughs> uh, so here you can see Stanford's autonomous helicopter, uh, which was demonstrated in 2004 to do a lot of stunts, uh, some things which even humans can't do, like, like flying in reverse, like, uh, like flying upside down and so on. Um, so I'll just let you watch for five more seconds. Uh, so you can basically see that uh, like it can do a lot of things uh, in a very impressive way. Like, and so this is through machine learning. Specifically, this is through reinforcement learning, like which is not something that we will cover in this course, like, but still machine learning. Okay. So machines can answer questions. Okay. So I'm not sure like how many of you know about IBM Watson playing JFRD in 2011, uh, where it actually won the game. And here is a small clip that I want to show. The Russian ballerina's London home, the Ivy Double. House, was famous for its ornamental lake with swans. Watson? Who is Anna Pavlova? Good for 1600. You're very good in the pronunciations today. Choose again. Ballet dancers for 1200. Answer is. <laughs> All right, you have uh, quite a large lead over our two human players. How much would you like to wager? I'll wager $6,700. What? All right then, $6,700, here's your clue. He was born in Kiev around 1889 to parents who were celebrated dancers from Poland. Who is Vaslav Nijinsky? That is correct, very nicely done. Okay, so here you can see not just how the system is performing, but also the back background, like so where it has a bunch of options available and it is calculating some probabilities on like which is the right answer. And this system was trained with lots and lots of Wikipedia articles and, 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 and question answering data sets um, to come up with uh, a, a really state of the art QA system, uh, which could win the game. And machines can play video games. Like, so this is the success story from DeepMind uh, in 2013, like which was the first time people were able to demonstrate that uh, you can develop a reinforcement learning agent in this case, uh, which can solve complex games like uh, with superhuman performance, uh, like with very little supervision. Okay, so, so in this case, like uh, the game is Breakout. Um, if you guys have played Atari, so you can see that this is in the beginning of learning. Okay, so the system is not doing so good, right? Like, so it it is slowly learning. And I think uh, now, let's see how it goes after the training progresses. So now this is after 120 minutes of training. And you can see that the agent is already doing a good job. Now, after 240 minutes of training, like so, you see that the system actually figured out how to solve this game in a smarter way, like so, which a lot of us do. Like, so you just try to hit one column completely so that you can go inside and start like solving it from the top so that it's easier. Okay, so, so, so this is a really cool demonstration of like what is possible uh, with the state of the art systems. Okay, so, and finally, like, uh, we have machines which can win humans in the game of Go. So, uh, like, if you have taken an AA course, like, so you would know that Go is considered to be, for a long time, considered to be uh, the hallmark of human intelligence. Like, so, and, like, uh, a lot of AA researchers always wanted to come up with the best possible Go system that can beat humans. And uh, even before 20. 16 or 18, I guess, uh, like people were thinking that we would need another 50 years to solve, like to come up with a really good Go agent. Like, uh, however, like DeepMind came up with this agent called AlphaGo, uh, which was able to easily beat Lee Sedol, like then world champion, uh, like in, a, in, a, in, a, in an international tournament. So, so these are all 
a bunch of uh, success stories that I wanted to highlight. Uh, but how far are we to reach the HAL level uh, agent, right? So, so here's a funny reality video, like if HAL was Alexa. Open the pod bay doors, please, HAL. Searching for COD recipes online. <laughs> Open the pod bay doors, please, HAL. Sorry, I can't find anyone named Rod K. More in your contacts. Open the pod bay doors, HAL. Sorry, I'm having trouble processing your request. What's the problem? Problem Child is a 1990 comedy movie starring Michael Oliver. What are you talking about, Hal? Playing talking heads on Spotify. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. Here are a few popular halal restaurants. Big Al's Pizzeria, Fatima's Halal Meat Market and Grill, Cedar's Halal Meat Market and Grill, and Old Water. Where the hell did you get that idea, Hal? Searching for flights to Idaho. Hal, I won't argue with you anymore. Open the doors. Playing the doors on Spotify. Okay, so given that we have lost a lot of time and figuring out the audio, I'm going to stop here. Uh, but you, I will give the link to the thing in YouTube. You can go watch it again. Uh, well, it's, it's not just meant to be funny. Like, so in some sense, like it also tells you like how far we are from having a system like HAL, okay? So, so maybe this is a bit of exaggeration of Alex. I'm, I'm not against, like I'm not complaining about Alexa here, but in general, like let it be our language understanding systems or speech synthesis systems like so. We have made a lot of progress, especially in the last couple of decades because of uh, the deep learning revolution in machine learning, okay? So we have made a lot of progress, but there is still a lot of things to be done and like uh, to be developed before reaching something like HAL. Okay, uh, well, I showed you a lot of games and, uh, and cool applications, like, but there are also a lot of other practical applications which are money-making like, and like, uh, like more useful in industrial settings and so on. Uh, like for example, like speech recognition and synthesis. Like, so we have amazing products like Alexa, Google Home or Siri, like, so which are getting better and better every year, right? Like, so, so that is because of machine learning and we have language translation systems. Like, so Google Translate is like, almost perfect for English, French, for example, like so, and, and they are able to support 100 plus languages now. And simultaneous translation is picking up, like so, now you can speak something and it will simultaneously get translated and the other person will hear it in a different language. And there's a lot of uh, progress in medical analysis and drug discovery, like so, like we are able to like bring down the entire drug discovery process from 10 years to two years or one year, right? Like so, all because of machine learning and recommender systems like so the recommendations that you get in your netflix or amazon like whatever and a lot of financial applications like stock price prediction and so on uh, personal aa system like which is one of the major applications of uh, ml right like so your siri or um or well i think alexa like whatever systems that you see in the top for speech recognition uh, they also have very good language understanding uh, component to it Robotics, like we are seeing a lot of progress in the last like few years and um, self-driving cars, like uh, which used to be a dream is like now close to becoming a reality, right? Like, so we already have self-driving cars going on the streets in some cities. And this is all because of machine learning and even finding new planets, okay? So the applications of machine learnings are growing every day. Like, so, like, so we are now more and more useful in even fundamental sciences, like biology or physics or chemistry, um, just like to name few, okay? So there are hundreds of applications and the goal of this course is to get you started with the basic principles of machine learning so that uh, you can go and do these applications by yourself, okay? I think that concludes uh, the slides that I have. So instead of stopping at 2.20, I'm going to stop now.